Welcome to the Real Estate Marathon Podcast, your guide in the race to financial freedom through real estate investing and sound financial practices. This podcast is for anyone interested in learning more about real estate investing, personal finances, and a new take on traditional retirement. Now, here are your hosts, Larry Fierro and Mike Moe. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Real Estate Marathon podcast, your guide on the race to financial freedom through real estate investing and sound financial practices. My name is Mike Mo, one of the hosts of the show. I'm joined today with my partner in crime, Larry Fierro. And this, Larry, is probably your favorite episode. Am I right? Um, yeah. Anything to do with credit score or credit repair, it's it's all pretty much my favorite uh, my favorite episodes because let's, let's face it. I just, uh, I just veg out on, on credit scores and, and, you know, I could sit there and look at my credit score and look at my, my bills for hours and hours at a time, every single day. And I will drag myself through this one because I know how important it is, even though I, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the subject, but I'm glad we're doing it anyways. Well, you know, Mike, it's because you're a giver to be quite honest with you. <laughs> uh, maybe, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever been described as that before, but we'll take it. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, uh, well, what do you think? Uh, how's everything going out there? Dude, it's, uh, it's quarantine life. So I'm just happy to be on another podcast and, uh, you know, doing what, doing what we like to do here. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Well, you want me to, you want me to jump right into the warm up, get them started. Let's kick it off, man. All right, man. Uh, the warm up is the Federal Fair Credit Reporting Act, the FCRA. What the Federal Fair Credit Reporting Act is, does is it promotes the accuracy, the fairness, and the privacy of information in the files of a consumer reporting agencies. Yeah, puts everybody just put some guidelines around this this credit report that we're talking about. What what companies can and can't do, and um, just makes it makes it sure make sure everybody's got a level playing field. Yeah, yeah, it gives people gives the creditors rights and uh, the people that are are being. Well, I don't want to say harass, but uh, if you are being called right repetitively by collection agencies, that sort of thing, there are certain guidelines they have to follow to make sure that they're they're living to the letter of the law. Yep, and you got to start out by knowing your rights. Yes, sir. No, All yeah. right, what do you think? Should we dive right into this? Yeah, let's dive right into it, man. All right. So before we get started, let's let's kind of put set the lay of the land here. So there's a we're going to talk about credit repair today, not just what a credit score is, not just um, kind of how important it is, because we detailed this back in a handful of episodes, right? Go right, twenty, thirty, yeah. forty episodes or something like that. Yeah. Um, but we're going to talk about kind of how to repair it. So the first thing is we're going to talk about getting started and knowing where you are, um, and then you know some tools to do that and the get really deep into the repair process, and then we're going to talk about how you maintain a good score. So once you get there, how to keep it there. And if you're already there, um, how to keep that score, um, nice and nice and lofty. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, the first thing, I mean, it's, it's like, uh, like some of the other programs out there that you see, the first thing is you, you got to admit you have a problem kind of, you have to, <laughs> you have to decide that you need help with your credit score. You find out what your credit score is and and decide, oh, it's not where I want it to be, which, you know, for the most part, I think a lot of people, it's not where they're, they want it to be when they first start out because it takes a lot of hard work. You have to understand the criteria and you have to actually put the work in to get it where you want it to be. Yeah. Yeah. The credit score is a, the credit score itself is, is pretty easy to understand. It's, it's those actions that, that, you know, have accumulated over the years that brought you to that credit score that you need to change. Right. So, and obviously that can, that varies dramatically from person to person. So it's looking at that score and trying to tie it back to those actions, um, that, that caused it to be where it's at. So you can, you know where to start. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what, constitutes a, a good credit score. You know, that's, that's one of those conundrums and those things that you're, it's a mystery. It's a mystery that people try and figure out. And, you know, for me, a, a good credit score is, is in my opinion, 660, 670 or above. Um, you, you look into the average area there in the mid 600s to 700s, and then anything over 700 starts getting better and better. And if you're lucky enough or fortunate enough to get into the 800 plus club, then that's stellar credit. And there's pretty much the world is your oyster at that point. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a little bit of a, you know, what is a good credit score? It's kind of like asking like, what is success, right? Some people, to your point, think like six, 650 is good. Some people, you know, 800 is 800 or bust, right? So, but yeah, I think you're, I think you're on point, man. High 600s is, is, is a, is a very solid credit score. Um, and I think uh, as we were talking to, um, Tim way back in episode three or four, I think, Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the, a lot of, there's a little bit of a diminishing returns at some point in time, you know, once you get up at the seven twenties or seven thirties, um, there are certain benefits that just, there are, there aren't a ton of benefits after that point. Not saying don't strive for those eight hundreds, right? But, um, it's definitely a little, little bit of diminishing returns once you get into those mid seven hundreds as far as like the benefit to you, but. Yeah. Yeah. And th- then there's the obvious benefit of bragging rights. <laughs> and so yeah, there you, you know, go. You get to let everybody know that you're in the 800 club. Um, so where do they start? I mean, basically, you know, one of the, the first things I like to tell people is that they should get a free credit report for all three of the, the big credit bu- um, bureaus, TransUnion, Equifax and Experian. And, uh, you know, you've got to check all three of those credit scores because our credit reports, because each credit reporting agency reports different things and not all of your accounts may show up on all three of them. And uh, one of them could have something that's incorrect. And, and, uh, you just want to jump on all three of them and make sure that every single item on every single credit report is, is accurate. Yeah. So again, those are Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. And um, you can go to each one of those individually and pull it. Um, If you're really lazy like myself, you can just go to a different company that will pull all three of them for you. Um, Something like, uh, we talked about this actually, again, we we went through the Credit Karma thing for the first time with myself um, on on that uh, episode, I don't know, 20, 30 episodes ago where we talked about it. And that is a really good resource. I think Credit Karma pulls two of them. I think it's TransUnion and... um, Equifax. Is it Equifax? Okay. It is Equifax, Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, so then you just have one account and it pulls both, you know, two out of the three major ones. Um, And then there's a lot of other resources that do that as well. Um, You want to make sure you're going to a legit, um, you know, a legit company and a legit Mm -hmm. provider. You know, you want to do your research because obviously you're putting some sensitive information with this, with these uh, websites. But um, yeah, instead of going to each one of these three individually, I I just go to Credit Karma and it pulls at least two out of the three. And then, you know, this, you know, some, sites that do all three, but yeah. Yeah. I'm the big one that I, that I recommend is annual credit report.com and they allow you one credit report from each of the three big ones yearly. And then, um, also if you're, say you're applying for credit and you get denied or they take some sort of adverse action and you don't receive the credit that you were applying for, whenever that happens, the company that you applied for has to give you a, a reason for it tell you what, which one of the three big ones they use to make their decision. And then you can contact that whenever you have an adverse action taken against you, you can get a a credit score at that point or credit report. So it's good to check on why they, why they took the adverse action. Yeah, yep, absolutely. And actually, you know, we're recording this on, you know, in end of April 2020. So there was a change just recently that the the annual credit report.com now allows you to pull it weekly. Um, so you can now stay really on top of your credit report and you get that free, free, credit, free credit report weekly. And the reason they did that, obviously, we're going through a little something called, you know, COVID-19 or the coronavirus, as some may call it. Um, and there's a tons of there's tons of scams out there right now. So people, um, people getting scammed out of money. Money and, and out of stimulus checks and out of taxes and out of, you know, just out of um, these random scams more so than ever. So staying on top of your credit report is not just good for your credit, but it's good to know what's out there in your name. To your point earlier, Larry, it gives you all your accounts. So if you got some random account that's racking up thousands of thousand dollars in debt, you can see that, you know, if it's some random account that was open not by you, you can report it and, and you stay on top of that by checking things out weekly. So and I got to tell you, Mike, you just keep impressing me, my friend, because I was not aware of the fact that annualcreditreport.com did it weekly now. So there's actually something with the credit score and credit uh, reports that I did not know. So kudos to you, my friend. There you go. I can't remember where I heard that. I heard that on some uh, some news you know, outlet or something like that. But yeah, then I looked it up and sure as, uh, sure as ever, yep, they, they made that update on April 20th. Yeah. 
that may doesn't say that it's temporary. It's for all for all intents and purposes, it looks like it's a you know an ongoing thing, but that may update in in the future very once nice. we're out of this yeah, pandemic. Very nice. but, um, so then uh, after I pull the credit score or credit reports, you have to actually I usually print them out, uh, so I have them hard copy, so I can make notes right on the the actual reports. Be we green, Larry. Come on, don't print it. <laughs> um, I, I print it into a PDF. Is that, is that better? <laughs> there you go. Uh, so I save it into a PDF and then I go through each one of those individually and you can do a um, couple of different things. First thing, if you have some negative information, you can actually go to the website for each of the big three and dispute whatever is negative or not negative, but whatever is incorrect on your, on your credit report and that usually they put in a dispute and then it takes them usually about 30, 35 days to come back to you and get the, the negative, uh, the incorrect information removed. If it comes back that they, they leave it on there, then you've got some other things you can do. You can find a form letter that you can send out to the creditors to try and get the, the incorrect information removed. You can call them and call the actual creditors, get, get a hold of them directly let them know that the information is incorrect. Try and go through those channels with the actual creditor instead of the credit score company. And basically just start standing up for yourself. You have to defend yourself on some of these because they're, they're larger companies. And let's be honest with you, they, they go through and do credit scores and credit reports on pretty much everybody out in, in the world today. And they just don't have time to 100% verify every every little tidbit of information. Yeah, this is this is one of those funny ones, man. Because I'm kind of on the same. I'm I'm under the the impression like you know these big companies they got their stuff together. Usually they're pretty accurate on either reporting and things like that, right? So I, I gotta be yeah, I gotta admit I'm usually not the first one to challenge or to you know stay on top of things like that, but. Um, I was looking it up and there's a, there's a, a study done by the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission. One in five people have an error on their credit report, at least one of their credit reports. One in five people. So if you have something that's bringing your credit report down that's inaccurate, that can just be a you know a couple clicks of the button reporting it through that credit agent agency. Um, and it's not even honestly, it's not like you have to dispute it. Uh, you know, you don't have to write up this big case about you know why you're in the right. You know, it'll there's just a simple couple handful of questions, um, and then they can do run their reporting and double check on it. And usually, they'll just remove that right from your credit report. But one in five people have an inaccurate state, uh, inaccurate mark on their credit report. Yeah, that's an accurate number, I believe, because, um, and one of the things I, I've actually been, I've all fallen prey to this be, uh, many times inaccuracies on my credit report, because, and I'm not even sure you know this, Mike, but I'm a, I'm a junior or a, or a second, number two, and uh, they're, con they're constantly confusing my father and I. So if you're listening to this and, and you have an opportunity to name your child a junior, don't do it. <laughs> Just don't do it because it, it, it'll turn into a nightmare later on because, you know, my stuff is on his credit report. His stuff is on my credit report. And you, you go in and try and you try and uh, dispute it. And they're like, well, it's it's Larry Fierro. And I'm like, yeah, but it's that's not me. That's uh, the original. It's more than the, one of you. That's right. That's right. And this is a little older, but it's the original. It's not the Memorex. It's so, a sequel. <laughs> that is correct. That is correct. <laughs> so, and like like you said, to your point, it's it's one of those things that so many people have errors on their report, and a lot not a lot of people pay attention to it. And that's one of the easy fixes is if you go in there and and uh, find something inaccurate, you should be able to stand up for yourself, defend your rights, and because you never know what's going to be dinging your credit score. So get on those yearly at least and fight it. You got to defend yourself yeah. against this. Yeah, and that's why I, you know I'm a big proponent for for the for making it easy, right? So the things like Credit Karma and things like you know I use Mint for um, a lot of like the you know figuring out where your finances and your budgets and things like that. And they have a free credit report too, and, and they automatically email you you know the once a month that it updates or whatever. Um, or I think it's once a month. Uh, Maybe it's sooner than that. Anyways, they email you every time it gets, gets updated, right? So it makes it really easy. So I don't have to remember to go pull it. It just automatically gets sent to my inbox. Um, so yeah, take a look at any one of those 
options that, that send you those free credit reports. Um, yeah, whether they're not as credit karma or mint or your bank or, you know, whatever that you just get on top of it and have something sending you something in your inbox that tells you when your credit score is updated. So you can keep up on those accuracies and make sure everything's uh, good to go. Yeah. And, and it, it can't be stressed enough. You've got to be diligent about this because yep. you, you don't want to have to use credit, but very rarely will you be able to go through life without credit. It's just it's yeah, a and state it's, of fact. And it's just, it's not hard. Like once you get your account set up with these people, you know, it literally takes me 45 seconds to check my credit score. Now when I get, when I get the emails and it's updated, or if I want to pop on a credit karma, my login information is obviously saved and it's it's literally 45 seconds and it updates my credit score. And I see, you know, it fluctuates, you know, a couple points here or there. And if it fluctuates more than that, I can dig in and see why. Um, So it's super easy to stay on top of it. So I think a lot of people shy away from their credit score because it's just that, you know, people are once the, with the unknown is kind of scary, right? So people don't know what goes in their credit score. They don't know how to get their credit score. They don't want to put their social or any of this other stuff in these websites online. And it's not that scary. It's not that difficult. Just, uh, you know, bite the bullet and go to one of these really easy sites and get it done. Yeah. And I think a lot of times people, people don't want to uh, delve into the credit score because it's, it's the way that they calculate it. It's just terrible. I mean, yeah. you, you do something on your credit score and it, it's happened to all of us. You, you do something that you think is going to be a positive and it ends up hitting your credit score. You know, like one of the things that's coming up for us, like I, I'm one more payment on my wife's car and it's paid off. Yeah. And I know what's going to happen. We're going to pay that off and it's going to close the account and it's going to ding your credit score. Even though you would think that it wouldn't, it, it actually dings your credit score a little bit because, I mean, it stays on there as positive payment experiences, but it's the, the length of time your her credit accounts are open. Yeah. And it's, it's such a, it's just a weird concept. And this is why I don't really like the credit score because I don't think um, taking out a ton of debt and just proving that you can pay it back is a very good measure of how good you are at your finances. But it's just, it's the rules of the game. There's nothing we can do about it. It's like we talked about in the last Monday morning motivation. There's nothing you can do about it. It's just you figure it out and learn the rules so you can use them to your benefit, right? So you can't change the credit score. You can't change that. A lot of people look at the credit score to know whether or not you're lendable and to know whether or not what rates and you sh- they should give you on insurance and mortgages and loans and credit cards and things like that. So if you can't change it, just figure out the rules and figure out how to play by them and use them to your ability, right? So to your point, Larry, knowing what affects your credit score so you can know what actions to take. Um, even though, if you, even if you don't like them is, is a is something that you need to do. Absolutely. You know, so, um, and then let's get back to the, the three reports. One of the things, you know, we've got listed a pay for removal option. And one of those, one of the things that is, is like, if you have, uh, uh collections or something like that, you can actually contact the people that you had owed and, make an arrangement with them that you'll pay the pay it off, but you want to make sure that they'll give you in writing that once that's paid off, they'll remove it from your credit report. Uh, you, you also have to be careful because I know a lot of times if you have a collection and you know, our first instinct is to go ahead and just jump on there take care of the collection, get it gone or call and talk to them about it, things like that. But you have to be very careful because if, if the collection or whatever is on your report has been aged for a certain amount of time, you could reset the clock. So not only say, say you're at year six of seven and it's about to drop off your credit score and you want to just take care of it. I'm I'm not recommending you make it go six years. You know, my, my (laughs) thing is don't have anything go on your score, pay your, but things happen, especially during the coronavirus, you know, people are, are out of work. So things are going to happen. So, you know, when you have something that's on your, your report six years, you have to be very careful because they could reset the, reset the clock on that and it'll stay on for another six or seven years. So yeah. if you do things incorrectly, you could have a negative, a negative impact from, from a mark for 14, 15, 16 years. And I've heard of people resetting the clock after 10, it's already fallen off. They've called and they reset the clock. So it went back on for another seven years. So you got to be very Ouch. careful when you're dealing. Yeah. 
and it was all according to FMCRA and, and they were able to, they were able to put it back in your credit score. So you just got to be very careful how you handle um, certain negatives on the, on your credit report. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And, and knowing, like I said, knowing what, what those factors that go into the credit score is so huge. Um, and it's so like you go onto these websites, like my credit karma right now, looking at my account, all it's got these, all these buckets and it lets you click in and figure out exactly like you need to be here to have, you know, green in this section or yellow in this section or red in this section. So it gives you exactly like what you need to do for each one of these things that make up your credit score, um, to really improve it. So super yeah. easy. Yeah. And when we first started this podcast, you had never dealt with credit karma. And uh, no, I, remember uh, the, I remember the episode where we got you all signed up and you were looking through your credit karma and everything. And, you know, and it's, it, I'll be honest with you, it's bringing a little bit of a tear to my eye that, that <laughs> you're, uh, you have it that readily available. So yeah, I mean, I, now I check it. I probably check it. Uh, I don't know, once a month or so when they, yeah. when they send me that update and uh, kind of dig in, see, see the updates. And yeah, it is interesting. Like the, these total accounts here, you know, like you're saying, when you pay off your wife's car, it's going to drop because one of those accounts closed. Um, and it's like, yeah, 21 plus accounts is like the best you can have, which I find is weird. The other one is this age of account. Um, so here we're talking about, you know, how to improve your credit score. So, um, you know, nine years or more is your, um, is like the best you can get for age of credit. Right. And so I'm looking average at all my age. average age. Yes. Yeah. So if I'm looking at all my accounts here, um, you know, I might have some, I got some that are, you know, 20 plus years old, but I got some that are, you know, a year and 11 months old. You know, if I close that one, that's going to improve my average age of accounts. Right. So, um, but it also is going to drop the other one. So if I'm, you know, if I got 23 accounts and I know I can drop one and go to 22 and that's going to drop my, you know, my one year and 11 month account, that's going to boost up my average age. Then I'm going to be a win-win. Right. So it's just, it's figuring it out and figuring out what makes sense for your situation and what levers to pull. Um, but like I said, this, the site lays it out super easy to use. It's super easy to look and see where you fall in these, these ranges. So definitely go check it out. Yeah. And I've, I've been firmly in the credit karma camp for many, many years now. So yeah, this, and, you're, you're the spokesman and they should start paying you. Nah, well, I don't like to brag, but I did get a check from them the other day. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. It was for 12 cents, but what are you going to do? Oh, okay. Whatever. <laughs> they, they pay you based on your value to them. <laughs> um, okay. And then, uh, once you desert, once you determine, um, how you're going to get, take care of any collections or negative public, public records or anything like that. You know, one of the big things you can do is maintain a hundred percent on time payments. That is key. That's a big part of your credit score. And I tell everybody this and, and, uh, I I'm planning on getting a tattoo eventually that says zero late payments ever zero late payments ever because, and and you just got to maintain that and you have to be very diligent because one late payment can drop your score a hundred points. Yeah, for For sure. And I'm looking to, you know, what that, the payment history is obviously the number one factor of their credit score, right? That is huge impact. Um, And if you look total number of payments, 99% 99% is green, but 98% is yellow and 97% is red. And that is the spectrum. It doesn't go to like 92%, 93%. So it is obviously very, very important. And that's out of all your payments that you've made, right? So it's um, missing uh, just a, a handful of those is dry, going to drop you from green to red. And like like you said, it's the biggest, uh, biggest impact on your credit score. So, and you know, this is just, this is, basic personal finance 101. If you take out a debt, if you take out a credit card, if you take out a loan, pay the dang thing back. Don't, don't be, you know, one of those terrible lenders who, who, you know, just forgets about things or decides not to pay things back and did default on it. You know, obviously things happen, you know, people come on tough times, but you know, live within your means. And if you're going to take out a debt, pay it back. And if you're like me who just completely, you know, has these things slip from your mind occasionally, the first thing you do when you get an account is you set it up on auto payment. So you don't do that. Right. Um, that's, that's the thing that I learned early, early on is, you know, if I have a, a payment over here and a payment over there, you know, one of these months I'm going to forget about them. So auto auto payment on every one of them. 
Yeah, the auto payment's a great feature, especially if you do have a difficult time with with remembering. And like you said, man, there's only a three percent a three percent window to go from completely squared away to a complete train wreck in your yeah. credit score. And that doesn't take very much to get there. You miss one or two payments and boom, you're there. You yeah, know, exactly. and, and it takes a long, long time. A bad, a, a 30 day late payment goes on your credit score, stays there for seven years. Yeah. That's one crazy. payment, seven years drops your credit score ridiculously. So, um, I always tell everybody when you start down this path, you need to make sure that you're prepared to, to find the money, borrow the money, do what you got to do to, to get the money to make these payments or do not get that credit. Yeah. Yeah. And you want to make sure, you know, any late payment is bad, but it does get worse the late, the, the later it is. So if you're 30 or 60 days late, um, it doesn't hit you as hard if you're 90 days late. Um, it's really hard to recover from, from a credit score perspective. So. Yeah. Yeah. And some people, I mean, you get into 120 or, or write-offs. I mean, I've, I've talked to people who've asked me how I get my credit score and I say, you know, let's take a look at your, your credit report. And they show me the credit report and I'm like, You've got like 10 accounts and and nine of them have 120 day late payments. I mean, and like, well, how do we get that off there? Uh, you wait seven years. That's <laughs> at this point, you, yeah. just, you know, and then you got to start today. You got to start today making, making those payments at hundred percent. It will eventually get better, but there's only so much you can do in credit repair. And if you get a company out there that tells you that they can, they can give them $1,500 and they'll delete all your negative information on your credit score. You should definitely run because that's not <laughs> something that's not something you can legally do. They can't yeah. legally remove information that is accurate. accurate. Information. Yep. Yeah. So, so, and just, just be very careful because there's a lot of scammers out there, man. And there's a, there's a huge difference between like a consumer credit counseling service where they help you get back on track with your creditors and a credit, um, nego- well, I'm trying to remember what, debt relief where they relief, yeah. they actually t- call the insurance companies or the, the credit card companies and, and they they settle. They give you a percentage of your, by that time your credit score is already messed up. But yeah, you end up yeah. paying 10% of your, your bills, but that's going to hit you for a long, long time. Yeah, for sure. So, and then uh, once that's all set and you've, you've started writing these letters, hopefully you can get the incorrect information calculated and then you have to make that conscious effort to fix your credit score by doing the right things and knowing what the right things are. So, yeah. Yeah. So for, and that's, that's, um, probably the more difficult thing, right? So if you take a look at your credit score and you can obviously see the, the pieces and the, the numbers and the, the scores in these different buckets, but you got to figure out like, what are you, like, where did you make that mistake that, that ended up in your credit score? Was it that you were over leveraging? Was it that you, you had too many credit cards? You had too many loans that you, that you couldn't make those payments. And, um, it's really taking, taking, uh, fixing the root of the problem, right? You're just not trying just to fix a score. You're trying to fix the actual root of the problem and, and make some better financial decisions. Um, so if you got some things on there, late payments and such, you won't really want to kind of address the root of it and make sure that you're, um, making better choices and, and living with your means, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then once you get your credit score fixed, um, you should definitely follow up every year to make sure that, that nothing, no surprises have come up. You, it's all about accuracy. It's all about paying attention and it's all about standing up for your rights. And once you get it figured out and you get on a regular basis, you'll be, you'll be in much better position. And a lot of people don't understand and don't realize that the credit score is something that is used for a lot more than just when you need credit, you know, and you and I both, we've talked about this before, your credit score can affect how much you're paying for insurance, your car insurance. I mean, you would think, what does credit score have to do with car insurance? Well, it has everything to do with car insurance. If you've got an 800 credit score, you're paying a lot less for car insurance than somebody with a 600. And, you know, and it's counterintuitive to think that car insurance premiums have anything to do with credit score, but they really do. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, like we, you said, there's a handful of things that you just don't realize that um, are impacted by the credit score. And, but a lot of the, just the more common ones, and, you know, you talk about like your, your lending ability, your mortgages, and you, to your point, your, um, your loans and your auto insurance, things like that. It really 
yeah, having a solid credit score can save you a ton of money over the course of, you know, of course of your, your lending career, you know, as if you, as you may know. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then once you started the, the dispute process, that's when you've realized how, how easy it is to dispute, you know, there, it doesn't cost you any money to dispute them the dispute the mistakes or outdated items on your report. And that's another thing that that's a good point that, that you bring up on the, the outline here is that, uh, you know, you're not just looking for inaccuracies, but sometimes you have something that's been on your, your credit score or your credit report for over seven years. If it's, if it's close to being a negative and they don't always drop right off. So if there's something that's been on your score for over seven years, um, Generally, if it's a bad thing, I mean, you don't really want to get good things removed from your credit score because that just doesn't work that way. <laughs> you know, yeah. that could actually hurt you in the long run. But if you have something, uh, if you do end up with a missed payment, a 30 day payment, if it stays on your credit score, credit report for longer than seven years, you got to get in there and tell them, look, I've done my seven years. You know, you got to remove these. And they generally, generally, they will remove them without a problem. Yeah. Cool. All right, man. So, um, we talked a lot about getting, you know, figuring out what you need to like, where you are getting started, checking in on your credit score and figuring out what goes into it. Um, we talked a little bit about the, you know, the repair process on in disputing inaccurate information and how we go about that and uh, some things to look for. So let's take a, you know, as far as repair process goes, you know, obviously we can dispute the, you know, some of the things that are inaccurate, we can go about that and make sure things drop off accordingly. But let's go through each one of these buckets real quick, you know, at a high level and, and figure out um, what are some of these main things that people can do to repair credit in, in each one of these buckets? And the buckets I'm referring to are payment history, credit card use, our credit use, derogatory marks, credit age, total accounts, and hard inquiries, and figure out what they can do in each one of these um, buckets of the credit score to to impact it. Yeah, yeah. Well, the first one, I mean, that the payment history, it, you you can dispute late payments if you know for a fact that your late payment, your payment was not late, and they're showing up as late. You can dispute that. You can uh, provide supporting documentation to the companies and that sort of thing. And if it ends up being accurate, another thing you can do is start right now and don't have any more late payments. That's just a, a big one right there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was the next? And the other, well, so the other thing, and um, I'm just assuming this is this would work, but you know, it goes off total payment history, right? So if you have a percentage of payment history, right, for those those late payments, so you know, if you are trying to you know water down a, a missed payment or something like that, you know, making more payments. So if you have a regular credit card that you don't typically have a balance on, obviously you can maybe put a few things on there per month and and pay that off every month, and that'll obviously increase your on-time payments, which then will help your percentage, right? So that's an excellent point. That's an excellent point. You can definitely uh, dilute the, the bad payment by, you know, if you have multiple cards that you're paying. Um, and what I tell people is when you have a card with a zero balance, if you're not making actual payments on it, but every month that that card is open, it shows up as a positive payment history, even though, oh, you, don't okay. have, cool. even though you don't have a balance on it. So that's, that's an excellent point right there. Um, so these first three that we're going to go through are high impact on your credit score. Oh, very right? high impact. Um, the next one is credit card use and it really credit use. So, um, you know, lines of credit and things like this all also fall into this, this, um, this bucket, but making sure that you have a, a healthy percent, um, of used of your credit line, right? So zero to 9% is the best you can get. So if you have a thousand dollar credit card limit and this is a total across all of your lines of credit. So say you got two $1,000 credit cards and you got 200 bucks, you know, you know, use across all of that then you're at 10% utilization, right? Or 10% credit card use. So you want to make sure that you keep that. Um, really anything below 30% is green. You're going over 30% and you're getting into the, the yellow range of the credit score, but uh, taking a look at your, your different accounts and keeping it in a healthy range. Yeah. And, and like you said, you've got to make sure you maintain that because the lower the, the lower the balance that you have used on uh, across all of your credit cards, um, the better off you are. And that goes for pretty much any credit card, but it can also be individual credit cards. So say you've got an overall usage of, we'll say 10%. Okay. 
but the credit cards that you have, all of the ones, say you have 10 credit cards, nine of them are at 0%. One of them uses 100% of the credit card. That's still going to ding your credit score a little bit because if you've got any cards that are at 100%, that's going to hurt. So um, you're going to want to spread that out over multiple cards rather than put it all on one single card. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, keeping it under 10% would be, would be ideal, but you know, 30% is still under 30% is still green, but I, I don't like to give people that option. Just go with the 10%, <laughs> just go with the 10%. You're not going to get 800 credit score. If you still have 30% of your credit usage. <laughs> well, and this, you know, another point of that, you know, if you have 30% maxed out on a card, is that something that you can pay off? in one month, uh, you know, our stance on credit cards is at least my stance. Like, you know, we've talked about this before. I think they're a great tool to be used in some cases with like, you know, the travel rewards, but I would never ever carry a balance on a credit card, um, more than, you know, it's so you, more than a month. So you're actually getting it charged interest. I, I would always recommend only putting on a credit card, what you can pay off in a month. So you're not getting charged that ridiculous, you know, 20 mid 20% interest rates. Yeah, that's just, uh, yeah, I, I can't, I can't abide that. <laughs> if you have that, go back and listen to our episode about paying off debt um, in, in a couple of different uh, methods that you can, you can take to attack those, uh, those really high interest payments. Cause those are just going you know, to dig you deeper and deeper and deeper into a hole until you, until you get rid of them. Yeah. Sounds like a debt snowball time. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. The next bucket is the derogatory marks. And, you know, the derogatory marks are collections, tax liens, bankruptcies, civil judgments, or anything like that that negatively impact your, your credit score. And the way you really impact this is is pay those pay those uh, collections off as fast as you can. As soon as it hits your, your credit score, don't let it wait six, seven years. Be very careful. Like I said, if it does get up to the six, seven year range, um, but certain things like bankruptcy or civil judgments, I mean, those are just, those, those are, they're very difficult to get off your credit score early. I, I've heard of people being able to do it, but it, it's, it's darn near impossible. And once you declare a bankruptcy, um, that's on your score for 10 years. That's going to ding you for a decade. Dang. Yep. That, uh, you want to avoid that if you can. Yeah. So pay all your bills on time. Make sure that you're not going, you're not getting put in collections, collection bureaus and that sort of thing. So. Cool. Um, credit age is that next one. So this is that one where it's, it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit tricky cause it's obviously there's nothing you can do to make your credit age faster. Um, but you want to be careful. It's, it's an average of all your accounts. So you want to take into account when you're looking at, if you're closing an account, if you're closing your oldest account that you have open, you might not want to do that. Cause that might be one of those things that are really propping up your, your, the average age of your credit. Um, and nine years is the best seven to eight years is still green five to six years is yellow and then uh, two to four years or under is red. So, you know, you, you, most people, at least, you know, in, in the mid twenties have a decent couple of years of credit under their belt, but you want to make sure you're, um, you're paying attention to what accounts you're, you're closing and what one, how many new ones you're opening. Cause if you know, you only got 10 accounts and you open one account, you know, that's obviously a month old, right? So that's going to drop your average age of your accounts pretty quick. Yeah. And I think this one, I, this one, I'm not a big fan of, like I said, this is what the the section that's going to ding my wife's credit when we pay off a, a, car, a car, it drops your, your credit age, or it could raise it depending on how long it is. But I mean, if you've had your, my, like my wife's, like we've been four years, I think right now, and that could hurt her credit age by dropping that off there if she has new ones. And then it also affects the total accounts, which is the next bucket. Yeah, Dude, I'm willing to, um, I'm willing to bet that that's going to raise yours. So like I'm only 32 and I got an average age of, uh, nine years, nine months. So if I had a, you know, f I don't know how many year loan car, I was give it a five or six or seven, whatever mm -hmm. year loan car or loan, you know, I'm trying to say how many years that loan right. was for, it was probably going to drop that off and, and juice up your average a little bit, hopefully. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm thinking the next step because, you know, her car is getting up towards a hundred thousand miles and mm, you yeah. know, when, when we get it, she's going to, she may want to get a new, a new car. So when you get another account, it's going to uh, ultimately, I, I don't think car payments because of the nature of how long they're around, 
I mean, if you're paying on a car for 10 years, uh, you're, you're looking at, you probably bought a, a Bugatti or something like that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just because of the nature of the length of the car payment, I don't really think that should be calculated. That's my personal opinion. That's the one thing that I don't like about credit scores is that once it comes off of your car, you're looking at four or five years tops generally anyway. So, yeah. You know, yeah, then, that's, that's a good point, man. Yeah. As soon as you open, as soon as you get a new car, you know, it's going to obviously bring your, that brand new account open. So, yeah. So every time we get a new car, it, it hurts her credit score for probably about six months to a year. Yep. Um, and then the next one, like you said, the total accounts, uh, 20, 21 plus is the highest you can get. And then it goes in different degrees. Um, I think it was it under 10 is red. And then 10, 11 to 15 is yellow. And then anything over 15 or is it 11 to 20? Yeah. So 21 plus 11 to 20 and then six to 10 and zero to five. So yeah. Yeah. keeping, uh, keeping your accounts 11 or more will keep you in the green. And then anything 10 or under is going light red and then fire engine red for five and under. So, uh, and this isn't super difficult. I mean, most people have a, a, a handful of accounts that they've had for a while, you know, various loans and student loans or, you know, credit cards and things like that. But obviously we want to keep them in a healthy balance like we already talked about, but um, a lot of people will have a decent number of accounts. And one of the this is kind of a weird one too, man. Not to sorry to cut you off there, but this no. is kind of a weird one to track as well. Like, why are we like twenty one accounts and you're you're green? Why do we care how many accounts that you have open? I don't know. Well, and and one of the the things that they don't really tell you too much too is is the type of accounts matter as well. And so it can affect the the score too because you've got to show you have to show that you can handle a wide range of accounts. So car they they say car payments different than a mortgage and a mortgage is different than a credit card and a credit card is different than the line of credit, but if you have all four of those things that shows that you can handle a diverse different uh, mix of credit uh, accounts and that's going to help your score on top of the total accounts that you have. So it also depends. It also matters what type of accounts you have too. Interesting. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. and then, uh, the last bucket that we're talking about is the, the hard inquiries. And what that is, is every time you apply for credit, you get a hard, you get a hard, well, you could get a hard inquiry depending on the company, but you could also have a soft inquiry, which doesn't show up on this, but hard inquiries are the ones that pop onto your credit score that they actually, a creditor pulled your, pulled your credit report and is using that to potentially give you credit. So the lower that number is, the better off you are. They're, they're thinking that you're not out there just willy nilly getting credit all over the place. Yeah. And this is, um, to your point, hard credit pull. So like your credit, if you're applying for a credit card, if you're applying for an auto loan, a mortgage, um, yeah, things, things like that, those are going to be those hard credit pulls. Um, even sometimes, you know, if you're applying for, if you're getting a new cell phone, they got to do hard, hard credit pull. So some things you might not um, think of that actually do hit your credit, but you know, this is a low impact for your credit score. So depending on your credit, score where it's at currently, you know, having a, a you know, a couple inquiries might make thingy a couple points, but it's not going to tank your credit score. You know, if you got zero hard inquiries, you're in the green, one to two is in the green. And then it really you know, it falls off pretty quickly. You know, three to four is in the yellow, five to eight is in the red. And then nine um, is in the, the fire engine red is I'm, I'm now dubbing it. Um, but again, it's a low impact on your credit score. So I don't, I wouldn't put a ton of concern around this one. And then, you know, quick tip for people who are mortgage shopping, you do have 30 days, if yeah, 30 days to kind of shop rates um, where it'll all the credit inquiries that you have with your lender or with different lenders shopping for a mortgage will, it will only account for one on your credit score because it uh, allows people to shop rates without negatively impacting themselves. Well, and I, they tell you that's how it is. Um, my personal experience has been that it, it's going to count as an individual one every time. You know, they, they say that they lump it all together and I haven't seen any, any empirical data that proves that to me because, um, and I'll use a car, car loan as an example. You know, whenever I go get a car loan, I go right to my bank. I've got one bank that I use for all my car loans, go in there, they give you one hard inquiry and that's it. 
if you go to a dealership and buy a car and fill out their credits credit application, um, you're gonna you're gonna end up with ten, you know, seven, eight, ten hard inquiries, and they tell you, oh, it's all gonna count as one. Well, the funny part is, is you know, I know the difference, and I only when I go. I've done it both ways. So when I go to my bank and get one hard, you know, I drop maybe two or three points. I go to a car dealership and they put six or seven, I'm dropping 25, 30 points on the, on yeah, the credit it, score. No, that's interesting, man. Yeah. We, uh, I bought a, a handful of years ago, bought something at a dealership. Yeah. And it only, they obviously did the same thing, shop, you know, a ton of banks for the rates and only counted one. And then, um, I did get double dinged for mortgages when I was shopping mortgages, but it was one of those quick disputes that they, they were able to pull it off. It is, I can't remember my lender sent it to me at one point in time, but there is a, an actual, um, uh, uh, law, I don't know if it's a law or regulation or whatever, you know, fair credit reporting, you know, law or whatever that states that they can only ding you once, at least for the mortgages. I know that I don't know about uh, the auto loans, but, um, they should be able to shop your rates without pulling your credit for auto loans at least. Yeah. Yeah. So just, just a piece of advice uh, for me, just get that one bank that you use for your auto loans. And then every time you want to get an auto loan, it's just one ding. That's it. Yeah. And it goes away quickly. Yeah. I mean, I think yeah, not to, you know, dive into the subject cause it's not the point of the conversation, but you know, if you, I think shopping rates without dinging your credit is phenomenal. You know, you'd be shocked, you know, how many, uh, what the variance is between your know, rates when you're looking at cars and houses, um, that can really, really have an impact on your credit. So you can go to a broker who can shop tons and tons of different um, lenders for those rates. And most of the times can do it without dinging your credit. You just want to make sure you're, you're asking those questions up front. Yep. Yep. So, um, and I, and I think that's pretty much everything I've got in this part. We, uh, we are actually working on getting a, a course set up for just this stuff. And, and I think in the course, we'll be walking you through more in depth, how to actually go about doing everything, giving you your, the, the actual letters you can use that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, just look for that coming out. That's something that we're going to be coming up with here uh, and start recording shortly. Heck yeah. Yeah. So, well, what All do right, you think? call to action. Well, so let's recap this real quick. So we talked a lot about uh, how getting started, where you can go, um, what goes into their credit score, the repair process, and then maintaining a good one, how to stay on top of it on a, on a regular basis. So really use those tools at your disposal. It's super easy process. So don't take the ignorance is bliss, um, kind of, you know, methodology with your credit score, just dive into it a little bit. These, these tools nowadays are so dang easy to use. You'd be dumb not to jump on there and at least kind of figure it out to be just a little blunt. Um, but you know, I'm, I guess I can't be a little uh, too harsh because Larry, as you know, I wasn't too deep into their credit score. I had like the, you know, when we started, it was basically, you know, the once, you know, quarter email that I got, um, from mint, but, uh, either way, now that I know the credit karma, I love that thing. Get on yeah. every, every once in a while. And it's so, so easy to figure out. So yeah, I we should get a, we should get a sponsor for credit karma, man. I think we dropped them like 15 times on the show. You know, I, I'm actually going to tag them. And when I post this, I'm going to do hashtag credit karma. <laughs> see go. if, uh, see if anything comes of it, but, uh, okay. you know, we'll take a sponsorship. It's all good. I need a new microphone, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. but, uh, right. you know, like you said, I, I love credit karma as well. Cool. All right. Let's do the, uh, the call to action, which is what I, my personal opinion, I think we should do the call to action is if you don't have a credit karma account, you need to get on right now, get a credit karma account and then, uh, go through and, and try and find those inaccuracies and start planning on how you're going to get them fixed. Yeah. Yeah. I love it, man. Yeah. I, I won't dictate where you go, but credit card is definitely a good one. Um, but figure out where your score is at. Um, and if you got a, a mediocre score or a decent score, take a look at the details on it. Don't just take a look at the score and, and be done with it. Um, take a look at, make sure everything's accurate on it. So especially in times like this, like we talked about with, with the COVID scams, take a look at your account section and it details all your accounts and the balances you have on them. Make sure that's accurate just to make sure that nobody's out there running around with your your social and charging up a storm on it. Right. So 
get, get the credit commerce or any or one of those free um, resources that we discussed. And if you already have it, do a little due diligence and dig into your, your number a little bit and make sure everything's accurate. Yeah. And you don't have to check it every morning. Like I do. I'm, I'm right. super uptight about it. So I, I check it religiously every morning. That's how I start my day right on credit karma. Um, but you should definitely check it regularly. You can update your account, your score, um, your credit report uh, once a week for the Heck credit yeah. comments. So just make sure you're, you're doing it regularly and I think you'll be all right. Yes, sir. That's everything I've got, Mike. Just uh, letting them know, wait for the, wait for our courses to come out. And Heck yeah. Yeah. Very excited about right. that. Yep. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Real Estate Marathon podcast. We'll see you next time. Take care, guys. Thanks for listening to the Real Estate Marathon podcast. If you found value in any of the content from this show, consider supporting us in the following ways. Subscribe to the Real Estate Marathon podcast. Leave a rating and review. Continue the conversation with like-minded individuals on social media by heading over to the Real Estate Marathon podcast Facebook group or follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Real Estate Marathon Podcast.